The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. We all live on this beautiful planet in space. In fact, we are, in one sense, on a spaceship circulating around a relatively small star called the Sun. Here on Spaceship Earth, an incredible ecosystem works in harmony to support animal life, plant life, and human life. But our solar system is a small part of the Milky Way galaxy. And the Milky Way galaxy is only one galaxy of billions of galaxies in the universe. My friends, we live in an awesome universe. Some of you may have seen the movie A Theory of Everything. It's a fascinating story of the astrophysicist Stephen Hawking and the challenges he faced with a devastating disease that left him almost completely paralyzed. In spite of his physical limitations, he was able to prove that the universe did not always exist, that the universe had a beginning, and that time itself had a beginning. One of his life goals has been to propose a fundamental theory to explain the universe. He wrote the following, quote, If we do discover a complete theory, it should in time be understandable in broad principle by everyone, not just a few scientists. Then we shall all be able to take part in the discussion of why the universe exists. If we find the answer to that, it would be the ultimate triumph of human reason, for then we would know the mind of God." End of quote. My friends, why does the universe exist? Do you know the answer? The secret that has evaded the most brilliant scientist on earth is found in your own Bible. The answer is so astounding that few will believe it. And yet it is profound, simple, and true. And it does reveal the mind of God. You need to know why the universe exists. Stay tuned. Warm greetings to all our friends around the world. My friends, science has given us information about our expanding universe that is so astounding it's almost incomprehensible. The Hubble telescope will celebrate its 25th anniversary on April 24, 2015. The Hubble telescope in the past 25 years has captured inspiring photos of galaxies and nebulae such as the Cartwheel Galaxy, the Cygnus Loop Supernova Remnant, the Crab Nebula, the Tadpole Galaxy, the Cone Nebula, the Swan Nebula, the M51 Whirlpool Galaxy, the Eagle Nebula, M16, the Lagoon Nebula, and many other startling images of the universe. These galaxies are expanding out into the universe at speeds in the millions of miles per hour. In fact, as Wired Magazine reported, the fastest stars in the universe may approach light speed. After doing some calculations, Harvard University astrophysicists Avi Loeb and James Gulachan realized that yes, stars could go faster, much faster. According to their analysis, which they describe in two papers recently posted online, stars can approach light speed. The results are theoretical, so no one will know definitively if this happens until astronomers detect such stellar speedsters, which Loeb says will be possible using next generation telescopes. End of quote. What else will we learn about our ever expanding universe? Why does it exist? Why do we as human beings exist? We'll discuss those questions on today's program, and we'll be offering you a revealing booklet that will help you understand the deeper meaning of the universe and our part in it. It's titled, Your Ultimate Destiny. We'll be offering you this inspiring book at free of charge. Be sure to write down the phone number and contact information to order your free copy of Your Ultimate Destiny. The space efforts of human beings have been remarkable. 
We have a natural curiosity to understand our solar system, the Milky Way galaxy, and the expanding universe. We think of the early astronomers like Galileo, who supported the Copernican view of the universe that the Sun is the center of our solar system, not the Earth, as previously taught. The Roman Church banned Galileo's writings in 1616 and later held him under house arrest for eight years until his death in 1642. It was not until October 1992, 350 years later, that the church at Rome finally admitted its error. The invention of more powerful telescopes gave astronomers vision deeper into the universe. George Ellery Hale managed the establishment of the 60-inch telescope on Mount Wilson in Pasadena, California in 1909. And he also oversaw the establishment of the 100-inch telescope completed in 1917. Astronomers began reporting amazing discoveries that there were more galaxies beyond the Milky Way and that they were actually moving out into space, some at the rate of 100 million miles per hour. Discover Magazine reported on the significant meeting between the famous astronomer Edwin Hubble and the great scientist Albert Einstein. Quote, on January 29, 1931, Edwin Hubble took Einstein up Mount Wilson to see the famous 100-inch telescope where Hubble had done at least two revolutionary things with the aid of Henrietta Leavitt's remarkable work on variable stars. One, he demonstrated that the Milky Way galaxy where we live is not the entire universe, but just one of many galaxies. And two, he confirmed, ahem, not discovered, that the universe was expanding, and with Humason, who started out as the janitor at the observatory, quantified it in what we now call Hubble's Law, end of quote. Not only did these astronomers and scientists measure an expanding universe, but they calculated that the high speed of these astrobodies moving out into space was not constant, but accelerating at a faster rate. My friends, no wonder astronomers and cosmologists are amazed at the reality and scale of our expanding universe. Ancient King David expressed his amazement in Psalm 8 in your Bible. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Ancient King David considered the scale of human beings compared to the heavens, the heavens that he could clearly see with the naked eye. He saw a purpose and a destiny for human beings. You can learn more about that in our free booklet titled, Your Ultimate Destiny. This booklet will open your eyes to your place in the universe. My friends, the Bible reveals an awesome future for humanity, and that future includes an incredible relationship not only to planet Earth, but to the whole universe. This free booklet entitled, Your Ultimate Destiny, will open your eyes to God's purpose and plan for you. You'll find amazing promises for you in the Bible concerning your future. This booklet, Your Ultimate Destiny, will give you hope and vision for a glorious, active, and joy-filled eternity. You need to know what you'll be doing for all eternity and your place in the universe. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy of Your Ultimate Destiny. You can also order this booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org or you can write to us at one of our regional addresses. For today's free informative offer, send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227 or call this toll-free number, 1-800-493-5437. That number again is 1-800-493-5437. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World Magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. 
Tomorrow's World. Call now. In the first part of our program, we saw that the universe is ever-expanding. The universe is so expansive, we talk of distances in terms of light years. A light year is the equivalent distance light would travel at 186,000 miles per second in a year's time. We desire to see far out into the universe, but we're somewhat limited to our own space neighborhood when it comes to human space travel and vehicle space travel. In December 1972, Apollo 17 landed on the moon. Astronauts Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt became the last of 12 Americans to set foot on its mysterious surface. Since then, no one has been back. In October 2003, China became the third nation to launch a human being into space. Their goal is to establish a permanent space station by 2020, and according to one report, quote, China's grand ambitions are not just to put a man on the moon by the end of the next decade, but to build a permanent lunar base from which it can plan missions to Mars and beyond, end of quote. Do we really need to establish a human colony on the moon or on the planet Mars? Many scientists, including the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, have been warning us for decades of the danger on Earth. Cosmologist Stephen Hawking sees space colonization as a backup plan for our potential human annihilation. According to this report on Space.com on April 13, 2013, quote, famed British cosmologist Stephen Hawking sees only one way for humanity to survive the next millennium, colonize space, and he's probably right. In a lecture Tuesday in Los Angeles, the 71-year-old Stephen Hawking said humanity would likely not survive another thousand years without escaping beyond our fragile planet, according to the Associated Press. Hawking has long been an advocate of space exploration as a way to ensure humanity's survival. Living on a single planet leaves us at risk of self-annihilation through war or accidents or a cosmic catastrophe like an asteroid strike, end of quote. Do we really think that we can live in peace in space colonies if we cannot live in peace on the planet Earth? If we cannot be responsible stewards over this planet, how can we be responsible stewards over the moon, the planet Mars, or any other part of the universe? As we saw in a previous Tomorrow's World program, Nations are even developing space weapons and preparing for possible space wars. You may want to search our website for the telecast titled Space Wars Ahead? One news report featured the headline, quote, China's president urges greater militarization of space. The report stated, quote, China's president is calling on his country to boost its military power in space by increasing coordination between its air and space defense programs. Speaking at the Air Force headquarters in Beijing, Xi Jinping told officers to speed up air and space integration and sharpen their offensive and defensive capabilities, Xinhua News Agency reported late Monday, according to Reuters. The news agency did not elaborate as how China expects to do this, but state media Tuesday called it a response to the United States increasing militarization of space, end of quote. My friends, what is our ultimate destiny? Will we fulfill all or some of the disaster movie scenarios? Will the earth become an incinerated relic with no life remaining? Yes, there are dangers ahead, but there is ultimate good news. Your Bible has demonstrated time and again the accuracy and power of its prophecies. You may be surprised to learn that your Bible predicts a time of world peace beyond Armageddon and the trying times ahead. There is hope for humanity. In fact, this amazing free booklet will give you the biblical references for humanity's glorious future. It's titled, Your Ultimate Destiny. My friends, what will you be doing for eternity? Will you even live beyond your death? This inspiring free booklet will give you the answers from your Bible. You need this vital information. Request this inspiring and revealing free booklet, Your Ultimate Destiny. Call now. Today's offer is yours absolutely free. 
No cost, no obligation. Visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. Find us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. On today's program, we've seen that nations are investing great resources in space exploration. But will we ever be able to enjoy this vast universe beyond our limited human life? Some philosophers using limited human reasoning have concluded that the Earth's existence in such a vast universe has no meaning for human beings. The space probe Voyager 1 photographed an image of planet Earth in our solar system. This 1990 image of our solar system was taken from a distance of around 4 billion miles. Planet Earth is barely visible, and it certainly looks very insignificant. Carl Sagan, an American astronomer and cosmologist, considering this pale blue dot, as he called it, made this striking comment, quote, Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe, are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves, end of quote. And that's from Pale Blue Dot, A Vision of the Human Future in Space, 1994. Carl Sagan called planet Earth a lonely speck in the cosmic dark. Must we then conclude that we are so insignificant as to be meaningless? Should we conclude that the universe is meaningless? Consider the precision required for the existence of the universe and the existence of intelligent human life. Astrophysicists Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose comment on the precision required at the origin of the universe. Quote, if the rate of expansion one second after the Big Bang had been less by one part in 10 to the 10th power, the universe would have collapsed after a few million years. If it had been greater by one part in 10 to the 10th power, the universe would have been essentially empty after a few million years. In neither case would it have lasted long enough for life to develop. Thus one either has to appeal to the anthropic principle or find some physical explanation of why the universe is the way it is." End of quote. And that's from The Nature of Space and Time by Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose, pages 89 to 90. Consider also, my friends, that for the precise conditions for life to occur, natural law had to process these incredible developments. As Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose stated, quote, the only way to have scientific theory is if the laws of physics hold everywhere, including at the beginning of the universe, end of quote. And that's from Quantum Cosmology, The Nature of Space and Time, page 40. These facts all point to a lawgiver and a creator that designed the earth and the universe for human life. Hugh Ross summarized it this way, quote, All the great cosmological discoveries of the 20th century fly in the face of materialist notions about the infinite random universe. On the contrary, they support the fact of a finite beginning caused by and guided by a divine, personal, caring designer who exists before and beyond the universe. And that's from the creation date controversy. My friends, where will you be in the next 10 years or the next 100 years? Will the universe continue as an environment for human beings? Your Bible explains the mysteries of life and our ultimate future. Why does the universe exist? We'll answer that question in the conclusion of our program. But first, I'd like to offer you this inspiring free booklet, Your Ultimate Destiny. This free booklet will open your eyes to God's purpose and plan for you and your family. You'll find amazing promises for you in the Bible concerning your future. Listen to these titles, A Purpose in Humanity's Creation, Created to Rule, Who Will Always Be in Charge, Inheriting a Universe, Spirit Beings Will Teach God's Way to Mankind, God's Awesome Love, and Jesus' Fervent Prayer. You need to know what you'll be doing for all eternity and your part in our glorious universe. 
So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy of Your Ultimate Destiny. You can also order this booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org or you can write to us at one of our regional addresses. You can also find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Tomorrow's World. For today's free informative offer, send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. Or call this toll-free number, 1-800-493-5437. That number again is 1-800-493-5437. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. On today's program... We've seen some of the glory and dimensions of our awesome universe. And yet we need to ask the fundamental question, why the universe? The one who created the universe will give you the answer. My friends, you can know the mind of God. This book, the Holy Bible, reveals the mind of God. He claims that the universe is evidence of his power, omnipotence, and omniscience. God showed ancient King David his plan for humanity. Psalm 8 and verse 5. For you have made him, human beings, a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. That dominion goes far beyond what most today imagine. That future includes the vast universe, but it begins here on earth. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, revealed our future inheritance in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, verse 5. It's a simple statement and yet profound. Matthew 5, verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. As God's children... We have an awesome inheritance. In fact, Romans 8 verse 17 assures us that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. God is training future kings and priests to rule on this earth as part of the family of God and the kingdom of God, as it tells us in Revelation 5 verse 10. But there is much more. Not only will faithful Christians inherit the earth, they will inherit eternal life as it tells us in Matthew 19, verse 29. Human beings have the potential to live in a different dimension. And there's even more. If you have your Bible, turn to Hebrews, the second chapter. God inspired the author to quote Psalm 8. Notice the emphasis here in Hebrews 2, verse 8, quoting from Psalm 8. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. What did God mean by all things? Is that just a generality or a platitude? Notice the exact qualifications in the following sentence. For in that he, God, put all in subjection under him, human beings, he left nothing that is not put under him. God excludes absolutely nothing in the universe from the future dominion of human beings who become a part of God's family. Listen to the rest of the verse, verse 8. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. This awesome event is yet future, but it is sure and certain. The Greek word for all in verse 8 is ta panta, which literally means the all. As the Greek lexicons explain, in the absolute sense, ta panta means the universe. Dr. Roderick Meredith explains this in our free booklet, Your Ultimate Destiny. Quote, The Greek word here, used for all things, may correctly be understood as the entire universe. In fact, in the Weymouth version, Hebrews 2.8 is translated for this subjecting of the universe to man. 
Immediately after that, Paul wrote, for in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him, but now we do not yet see all things put under him, Hebrews 2.8. Notice that nothing is excluded from being under man's dominion, but it is not yet accomplished. Commenting on these verses, Erdman's critical and experimental commentary states, as no limitation occurs in the scripture, the all things must include heavenly as well as earthly things, end of quote. God wants to give you, along with millions and billions of others, dominion, not only over the earth, but he wants to share with you the entire universe. But we can only do that when we inherit eternal life, only when we become God's immortal children. God has an awesome purpose for you and me, and that purpose includes our future in the universe. But first, human beings must be born into the kingdom of God as immortal, glorified children of God. That takes place at the resurrection described in 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4. As we prepare for that future, listen to this, the universe exists as the environment for human beings to learn about the creator of the universe and to prepare for their awesome destiny. As incredible as it may seem, my friends, God reveals that the universe is our future inheritance. That is the mind of God you can understand. We look forward to the time when we will live in a spiritual dimension, not limited by space and time. God reveals this promise in Revelation 21, verse 7. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. As astounding as it may seem, God created the universe as our future inheritance. May God help you, my friends, to have the courage to face the awesome inheritance awaiting human beings who love God and trust their Savior, Jesus Christ. Read these scriptures in your own Bible and rejoice in the promise of your ultimate destiny. You need to study these awesome truths in your own Bible. Be sure to request our inspiring free booklet, your ultimate destiny to learn more about your glorious future and the purpose of the universe. And be sure to join us every week on Tomorrow's World. Roderick Meredith and I will continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ and the exciting end time prophecies and their meaning. We also invite you to join our colleagues, Wallace Smith and Rod King. They'll continue to give you special biblical perspectives on Christian living and the prophecies of tomorrow's world. So be sure to join us again next week right here at this same time. To view the Tomorrow's World telecast or request today's free offer, visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. And remember to find us on Facebook and be sure to follow us on Twitter. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.